In today's video, I'm gonna show you an extremely minimalistic animation. It's gonna be kind of like a user interface, and I think this one is gonna be extremely valuable. So if you want your edits to look extremely smooth like in this animation, then just stick till the end because the final touches were the best. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. We're back in After Effects, I'm just gonna show you the comp settings. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the rounded rectangle tool, and we're just gonna create such a shape. For this, I'm gonna turn on the solid color in the fill, I'm gonna turn off the stroke, and this is gonna serve us as a glass. So I'm gonna rename it. Then what I would do is probably hit Ctrl T and we're gonna add the text. And by the way, I just went on Pinterest and I found this, so we're gonna be inspired by that particular scene. I'm gonna delete it. And the next thing we want to do is put it a bit higher. I'm gonna copy and then we need the price. So I'm gonna type in 29.90 and we're just gonna change it to, let's say, maybe black. I'm gonna bump up the font size just like that. And we're just gonna copy this, put it here. I'm gonna rename it to Streamline the process. Probably put it somewhere here, maybe a bit lower. I'm gonna copy this one more time. Let's say create faster. We're gonna put it to the side, duplicate one more time, and we're gonna type in elevate visuals. And you know what? Something important, whenever you got the text, it's good to go from the biggest to the smallest. So we're just gonna replace this with elevate visuals. So that way it's just more pleasant for the eye. It's all about the details. Then we're gonna probably make it a bit smaller. So I'm just gonna uncheck constraint proportions and let's just play around with the Y. Let's put it higher. And all we need to do here is actually grab everything and put it in the middle. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna create a line. So I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard and create two points. Make sure to hold shift to have an even line. And then we're just gonna bump up the stroke width or maybe decrease it and then we're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna change the fill color to none. And yeah, we're pretty much good here. I would probably just go to the line cap and change it to round. So that way here we're gonna have it rounded even though it's barely visible. And the next thing we want to do is create a button. So first I'm gonna type in the text, it's gonna be by now. Let's recenter, put it below and maybe we're gonna use semi bold for this. And I feel like it's a bit too big so I'm just gonna scale it down and we're just gonna create another shape which is gonna be rounded rectangle tool. So we're just gonna do it like that. Let's recenter, put it below and we're just gonna turn off stroke and turn on solid for this time. So what I want to do here is put it below the buy now and we're just gonna change it to let's say black. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, it's already looking pretty cool to be honest. I really like it. We're gonna create some animations over here, but first I'm just gonna stylize it a bit better. So I'm just gonna change it to a small letter. I feel like it looks way more appealing. I'm just gonna scale it down, make sure it's in the middle. Okay. And then we're gonna take care of these three texts. So for this, let me just change the color so everything is clear for you. All right. So now I'm just gonna create the keyframe for position, move it forward. We're gonna drag them lower, select all of them, hit F9, go to the graph editor, and we're just gonna create a peak on the left. Okay, this is extremely sharp, so we're just gonna slow it down. Pretty cool. And then somewhere at this position, we're just gonna create a keyframe for opacity. Move backwards and change it to 0%. And now just to make it look better, we're gonna offset these layers. We're just gonna reorder it and we're gonna do it like that. So it already looks pretty appealing for the eye. Then I would probably just add opacity keyframes to 2990, just like that. Let's just slow it down. And also these three texts could be a bit later. And then we're gonna take care of Pro Edit Pack. So I'm just gonna hit Alt Shift P, move it forward. And we're gonna probably bring it from the right. I'm gonna select both Easy Ease, go to the Graph Editor and same procedure, pick on the left. Way too fast. And we need to adjust the timing. Actually, let me just reorder it. Then we're gonna rename this and this is buy now button or maybe let's just call it button. And as for that line, I'm gonna go to the properties, add trim paths, open up, keyframe and move it forward, change it to 0%, select both and hit easy ease. I'm gonna go to the graph editor and same procedure. Let's extend, it's extremely fast. I'm just gonna extend, actually move the layer forward. And then we need to take care of the last button. So what I would do here is definitely use the size, so I'm gonna keyframe it. I'm gonna actually trim the layer to this position. Then we're gonna move that keyframe forward and we're gonna uncheck constraint proportions here and change X to zero. That way it's just gonna reveal from the middle and I'm gonna select both keyframes, easy ease, and again, pick on the left. Okay, pretty cool. Let's just offset it a bit. And then I'm just gonna duplicate button and I'm gonna go to the modes and we're gonna change the track mat in our text to button two. We could actually rename it to cover I'm gonna trim that text and we're gonna create a keyframe for position. Now I'm gonna go to the beginning of the layer and as you can notice when we're dragging it down, it's disappearing. So now I'm gonna save both and apply 
the graph. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Maybe let's adjust the timing. And also as for provided pack, we're gonna add opacity keyframes to just fade it in nicely. Okay, that animation is starting to look pretty cool. Then what I'm gonna do is select all these layers apart from the glass. I'm gonna pre-compose them. Let's call it front. I'm gonna pre-compose the glass. We're gonna call it glass. Let's hit enter. And we're gonna go into that layer. Here what I want to do is create a new adjustment. We're gonna rename it to blur. We're gonna add Gaussian blur to the adjustment layer. I'm gonna bump up the blurriness to around say 42. And what we want to do is do the same thing as before. So I'm gonna go to the modes. Actually we were in modes. And we're just gonna change it to glass. So that way you're not gonna notice anything. But if we create a text, let's say editing shift. And we're gonna change it to maybe bold. I'm gonna scale it up and we're gonna put it somewhere here and make sure it's behind our glass. And now the magic trick is rasterizing that layer. So look at that. Everything that is gonna be behind it is gonna be having that kind of blurry effect. So if we just play around with the position of this, you're gonna notice that amazing effect. It's especially visible on the corner. So that's an absolute fire. I just feel like we could bump up the scale here and that way we're making it more visible. All right, so this is literally perfect. Now what we need to do is create a new camera. I'm gonna make sure I'm in one node camera and also I pick a preset of 35 millimeters, hit OK. Then we need a null object, parent the camera to the null and we're gonna rename. Let's select both, put them underneath, change the color. And now the thing is that we need to head over to the glass and the only thing I'm gonna select the 3D layer on is actually the glass. So make sure the adjustment layer stays like it is. Here we're gonna turn on the 3D layer on everything else, actually on this one as well. And basically we're ready to create a little bit of movement. So for this I'm gonna hit Alt Shift P for cam control. Let's move it forward. And the thing is, to create a little bit of depth, we need to grab the editing shift and move it away. Okay, let's see now. Maybe even more. Let's scale it up again. So now it's perfectly visible. I'm just gonna extend it, probably select these two, easy ease, go to the graph editor. And what I want to do is create a peak on the left. So this is becoming really dope at this point. I'm just looking at the inspiration. And the thing they did was actually having a different color on this. So it's kind of grayish and then they have the black background. So for this, we could head over to the glass. I'm gonna duplicate that layer. I'm gonna turn on the visibility. We're gonna rename it to fill. And we're gonna change the color to a little bit lighter gray. Let's hit OK. And I'm gonna decrease the opacity to say 20%. And if we go back, we're gonna notice that color difference. I feel like we could go to say 35, a bit better. Dude, that's looking so good. What if we decrease the opacity for editing shift? Yeah, it's gonna make the thing in the front more visible. Okay, so that's what we have so far. And then the next thing we're gonna do is create a new light. I'm gonna pick white. Make sure you're in the spot. I'm gonna decrease the intensity. Let's hit OK. And we're just gonna play around with the position of this light. So now, if I get it a bit closer, and also I'm gonna go to the settings, decrease the cone angle, it's gonna be so good. Then we're gonna hit OK, I'm gonna go to one view, and we're achieving that kind of mysterious... Jesus, it's so good. That's really nice. I'll probably just go to the front, and here in the buy now button, I'm gonna add drop shadow. We're gonna decrease distance, bump up the softness, and also change the color to white. I went overboard. This is pretty cool. Probably we could go down to 30%, okay? Just so it's standing out a bit. And you can literally play around however you want with this. So for example, you could go over to the glass and here in the blur, we could add scatter as well. Let's bump it up to say 30. We're gonna turn off the blurriness. I mean the Gaussian blur. And you're gonna achieve that effect behind the glass. The possibilities are endless, but I'm gonna leave it with Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna probably just play around with this light a bit. I'm thinking maybe we should keyframe X rotation. So we're just gonna go back and drag it to the bottom. Actually, so the light is facing down. Oh, that's really good. Let's slow it down. We're gonna apply the intro graph. And now the thing we should do is definitely split the camera. So we're just gonna hit Control Shift D somewhere here. And what I'm gonna do is just hit C on the keyboard, click it multiple times, you're gonna achieve different tools. So I'm gonna grab it with this. Now move forward and say this is gonna be our kind of starting position. Then I'm gonna duplicate Cam Control 1, hit U, delete the last keyframe, parent 1 to 2, move forward, and we kinda wanna move higher. Let's apply the mid graph and let's see what we got. Okay, we need to adjust. I just feel like it should be a bit later. So when the movement is kind of stopping. So we can squeeze it in. Okay. 
and then I'm gonna split the camera one more time. We're gonna duplicate cam control 2, hit U, delete the last keyframe. We're gonna parent 2 to 3 and let's create a movement going towards the left. And now somewhere at this position, we wanna finish the movement on the price. Okay. Pretty good, maybe let's move a bit backwards. Okay, I'm just gonna definitely slow it down. I'm gonna select both and we want the peak on the left. Yeah, that's perfect. Probably we could squeeze it in a bit over here, just like that. And by the way, you can play around with this animation by changing the color in the spotlight. So if we change it here, we're gonna achieve pretty unique looks. Okay, that kind of orangey is really nice. Let's see now. before and after. I'm gonna leave it with the white. Also the thing we need to do as the final touch is turn on the motion blur on everything. I'm gonna go here, turn it on everywhere. Let's go to the glass. I'm gonna do it here as well. Maybe on top we should add transform. I'm gonna alt click position, type in wiggle and in brackets say 1.5 comma 10. Ooh, that's even more realistic. Probably as the final touch, what I would do, and it's not posterized time, is just going to the button. So we need to go to the front and I'm going to try to apply the deep glow. Okay, but it's way too intense. So we're just going to change it to 0 0.3. I'm going to decrease the radius. Let's see now. Not bad, to be honest. But it's kind of causing me to look at this at the third scene and I want the people to look at the middle. So yeah, I'm just going to delete that effect. The fact that I really love about these tutorials is that I also learn a lot of things during the process. So it's pretty cool to bump up the skills and at the same time provide value. So that'll be it. Here you have the final effect. It's so freaking amazing. Absolutely love this one. And with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.